In this exercise, we're going to load in some sinks. Now, sinks are considered component families, just like such things as water closets, bathtubs, pieces of furniture. If you can master putting a sink into your project, you can put in just about any of those typical kinds of component families into your project environment. In this case, we really want to load in two sinks. One's going to be a sink that goes into each one of our different bathroom areas. We're also going to have a sink that'll be a kitchen sink that'll come into here in what more than likely be a break room area. To begin, let's zoom in on this part of our building. Now we need to load in some of those sinks. We can do that by coming underneath Architecture, selecting on Component, moving over to Load Family, scrolling down until we see Plumbing because these are plumbing fixtures, going into the Architectural folder, and then double clicking where it has Fixtures. From here, we have a variety of different kinds of component families, showers and drinking fountains. But the ones, of course, that we want to load in are going to be sinks. So double click on sinks. From here, there's going to be two different ones that we want to load in. Now, the first one is going to be the sink double. And this is going to fit there in that break room area right in this location. The next will be one of these down here, and it's probably going to be the Sync Single 2D. Let's just check on it to verify. That'll work okay in this condition. Now, the key word here is 2D. This is actually a two-dimensional sink. Now, let's go through the process of loading this in, and then I'll describe why we think about using a two-dimensional sink. Hold down the Control key, and then click on the Sync Kitchen Double. And if Sync Single 2D isn't already highlighted, hold down your Control key and click on that too. Click on Open to load these in. Now the reason why we might have a two-dimensional sink, and that's what I'm looking at here in the preview underneath our properties, is that two-dimensional sinks take up a lot less space in Revit as far as file size is concerned or processing power is concerned within the Revit environment. So if you have a lot of different kinds of objects, particularly on larger projects, what you'll find is that putting two-dimensional components in instead of three-dimensional components will sometimes make the model less heavy, which means it'll be a faster project if you do it that way. You'll also discover that the way that it looks inside of a plan view won't be any different. So whether it's a two-dimensional sink or a three-dimensional sink, if you're looking straight down at it, you'll never be able to tell the difference between the two. So as a result of that, unless you absolutely need to see it in 3D, it's actually usually better to insert in two-dimensional components. They'll schedule the same way instead of three-dimensional components just because it's easier for Revit to process. So in this example, let's make sure that we use the Sync Single 2D. Move in here to our restroom area. And I'm just going to put a couple of wall-mounted ones here. And put a couple of wall-mounted ones over on the other side. And then hit Escape whenever you're done. I'm going to come over here, and we're going to place a sink into this sink hole. Now, I do have a little minor design issue here that I don't like. I'm looking at this countertop, and I'm seeing a hole right here, and it's not centered on the casework underneath. So I'm going to select on the countertop first. Depending on the countertop, in some conditions, you might have arrows that would allow you to drag the hole over to the right location. But since this does not have the arrows associated with this opening, we need to look underneath the properties of this particular countertop to move it over. Here I can see that the sink location is 3 foot 3. Change that to be 5 foot, and then move your mouse over into this direction. I can see that's over a little bit too far, so we're going to change this to be 4 foot now, and move our mouse over in this location. And we can see that it shifted it up, and then shifted it back down again, so now this is more centered inside of this cabinetry, or this piece of casework that's underneath. Now that we've done that and we know that the hole is in the right location, let's place the sink in there. To do that, come underneath the Architecture tab again, select on Component, and in this case I don't want that 2D sink, I want the Sink Kitchen Double, which is 42 by 21. Come over in this direction, you can hit the space bar to rotate it around, and now I'm going to try to place this right in this area. I can already see that the sink hole isn't going to be big enough, but that's okay, we can adjust it after the fact. Click in order to place that right in that location. Technically, we wouldn't even need to adjust that hole for the sink if we didn't need to. The only reason why we might actually adjust it is because in this case, the hole for where the sink is going to be sitting is really only that big and you'd only see that in a 3D view. But let's take the time to make that adjustment. 
So if you select there on the countertop, I'm going to scroll down here, and I can see that there's a couple of different dimensions here related to the sink opening, including the depth and the width. So that's going to be the overall dimensions of this particular opening. Well, I'm going to assume that since it's one foot three is the depth, that's going to go from here to here. And that looks about right, so it's really the width that needs to be adjusted. Now, I'm not sure the exact width this is going to need to be. So I'm going to change this to be three foot, just for starters, and see how big that three foot dimension looks. It's close. I'm now going to do three foot three. Take another look at it. That's just about right. The only problem is now is that the hole there for where the sink is at needs to now be moved down again. So, once again, we're going to change the location for this. And in this case, I'll type in three foot six just to see what the difference is. And we can see that now that opening is just perfect for where those sink basins need to go. This process that we just did is not just for such things as sinks. Pretty much anything that would be considered a component family would get placed in in this way. There's nothing wrong with 2D if you only need to see it two dimensional in that specific view. In the case of a plan view, if this is going to be the only spot I would ever see these sinks, then loading in two dimensional sinks is fine because it'll show up and document appropriately. And finally, if we're going to place a three dimensional sink into the plan, make sure to choose a three dimensional sink, and then shift it to place it in the appropriate location. In this exercise, we're going to load in some casework and then place the casework in our building. The first thing we need to do is figure out where's the casework going to go. And what I'd like to do is place some casework along this wall, turn the corner, and come up this wall here. One thing that I'd like to do first, because it might get in the way, is I'm seeing this text here from our interior elevation tags. Just for right now, I'd like it to be temporarily hidden. So to do that, click somewhere up here in this white area, hold your mouse button down, and window around this elevation tag and all the text that's associated with it. When only that is highlighted, making sure you don't accidentally hit the door, let go of the button, move down to the little eyeglasses down at the bottom of the screen, and click on Hide Element. This will temporarily hide it. It's not permanently gone, and if you tried to print, it would still print. But just for right now, so that we can see past it when we're placing our cabinetry in, it's going to be temporarily hidden. Now, we need to start loading in some casework into this project because I know that there isn't any currently loaded. So come up here to the Architecture tab and select on Component. Now, move over and select on the Load Family button on the right-hand side of the ribbon. When you do that, you'll see a list of different folders, and we want to open up the Casework folder. From here, there's different categories, such as tall cabinets, wall cabinets. Technically, any of these could get loaded in, but what we want to do in this exercise is load in base cabinets. After going into the base cabinets folder, we'll see that there's a variety of different base cabinets that we can choose. The vanity cabinets are a little bit shorter than the base cabinets, and if you try to line them up, it gets to be a little bit difficult to have countertop going across the top of them because one's lower than the other. So let's take the base cabinet corner unit angle as being one of those that we want to load in. Also, I know that a sink will ultimately go in here. So if you hold down the control key on the keyboard, you can click on double door sink unit. And we'll now load this one into our project. And for some of the other base cabinets, single door and drawer will work pretty well. And I'd also like this one that has the four drawers. Keep holding down the control key and click on that one as well. Once you have these four different types of cabinets in here, move down to the bottom and click on Open. And this will load all four of those in. Move over here to your properties and take a look at the different ones that are loaded in. And if you select here on the picture and the type selector list, you'll see all those different cabinets that we just tried to load in. Now the one that we definitely know where it's going to be located at is going to be the corner one because it's going to be at the corner of these two walls. So that's going to be the best spot to start. Move down where it has the base cabinet corner, select on the 36 inch. And now a secret to this is before you even click, hit the space bar on your keyboard. When you do that, you'll see that it'll rotate your component around to be in whatever direction you need it to be in. And when you see those two walls turn blue, that's where you want to click. And we've now placed that corner cabinet there into the corner of our room. Now this is showing up as being dashed for a couple of reasons. One is because inside of the family, it's actually drawn out as being dashed in a plan view. The other reason is 
ultimately there will be a countertop put on top of this. So when the countertop is put on top of it, it would be hidden underneath the countertop. Now let's change to a different kind of family. Here we have the double door sink unit, a little bit lower down. That's the one that I actually want. Let's pick the big boy, the 48 inch one. Hit the space bar again. When it looks like your cursor is in the same direction as the wall, that's exactly where you want it to be. And then just line these two up and then click to place. Now I want to put at least one cabinet over here and at least one cabinet over here. I'm personally going to put in a 24 inch single door and drawer cabinet in this location here. In fact, I'm going to put two of them together side by side. And I'm going to see what the other cabinet is that we have up here, the four drawer. I'm going to select on that, spin it around, and put it in place. You can hit escape a couple times on the keyboard to get out of the command. And now finally, I always like to look at my cabinets before I just accept them as being in there in the way that we like them. Because depending on how they're made, you want to make sure that the drawers aren't getting slammed against the wall instead of out into the room area. To do that, come underneath the View tab, over here to 3D View, and we're going to place a camera inside of this room. Somewhere over here near this dimension, click once, make this cone come way out into here. Whenever your cursor is somewhere into this next room, click in order to be able to place this. And when you're done, you'll be able to see the ceilings, the walls, as well as the casework that makes this view up. Also, if you want to see a little bit lower down, you can click on the little dots that show up there and drag it down. If for some reason you can't see the ceiling or you want to see less of the ceiling, you can click on the little control dot and either drag it down or drag it up in order to be able to see more of your casework. We currently have casework that's wrapping around the corner between these two walls. The only thing is though, as we can see, it doesn't have a countertop sitting on top. So let's go through the process of loading in a countertop as well as placing it here in our view. Our best bet though will be to begin by going into our first floor floor plan. And the reason is, is that placing countertop is just a lot easier to do if you're looking straight down at it. Move up here to the architecture tab and select on component. Move your mouse over and then select on load family. Now the kind of family we want to load in will be a countertop family. And it doesn't show up here on the list, but it's located underneath casework. So double click on casework. And here we'll see a countertops folder. Double click there. And we want to load in the countertop L-shaped with sinkhole 2. Select on that, we'll see an L-shaped countertop. And that's exactly the shape that we need to place in our project. Click on open. You'll see it following your cursor around. Now what you'll need to do is hit the space bar in order to rotate this around until it's the shape that you want it to be. Or in other words, it's going in the same direction as what this casework underneath is going. Zoom into the corner and then click to place it when you see those two blue lines there. If for some reason all you're seeing is dark and thick lines and you're not seeing the two blue lines like we just had, what you can do is come up to the View tab and then click on this button right here that says Thin Lines. So if you have dark lines like that and you want to see those individual thin lines, it's View and Thin Lines to see that level of detail. Now if we zoom back out again, unfortunately because of the dimensions of our casework down below, the countertop currently isn't covering the entire thing. To adjust this, select on the countertop. You'll notice that there's this option right here. Click on the arrows and hold down, and then just drag it out, and then let go when you get out to the end. And do the same thing up here at the top. When you've done that, it should now cover this pretty well. The next thing we'll want to do is take a look at this from a camera view to make sure that it's at the right elevation. To do that, we're going to come down here on our list, and we're going to double click on 3D View 4. That's our camera view for this room. And here we can see we have the countertop with the sinkhole in there, and it's going around the corner. So the place countertop, the first thing you may need to do is just load it into your project. But after that, go into a plan view, click at the intersection of wherever you'd like that to begin at, and then you may need to adjust it, but at that point it's a matter of just selecting on the counter, and in plan view you can drag the ends until they're in the right locations.